Hello everyone, how are we all doing today? Yes, we are back, we are back, we are back. Yes, the Azure Diner series is back. And of course, today, you know, we, we, we always have interesting topics for you for this series. And we'll be continuing on this particular series to talk about more interesting topics. Yes, yeah, so today uh, we are going to be looking at monitoring and backup of Azure resources. But before we proceed, let me invite, let me not say invite, let me introduce once more our uh, able MVP in the house, none other than Rafael Gabmomo. Hello, Rafael, how are you doing today? Yeah, good afternoon. I'm doing very fine, thank you. How about you, bro? Awesome, I'm doing great, I'm doing great. It's always a pleasure having you in the house. Um, um, yes, I mean, because I mean, the, the kind of knowledge we get to share, I feel like it's always awesome. It's always awesome. All right. Um, we'll be proceeding for the topic today. Like I mentioned, we are taking a look at uh, monitoring and the backup of Azure resources. Um, MVP, sounds Rafael, interesting. It, sounds yeah, interesting. It sounds interesting, though, because yes. I feel like after you've done all you've done, all your setup, all your configuration. This is one very, very important aspect that needs to be dealt with. And the reason it needs to be dealt with is because just imagine you have all your resources set up and all of that, and then there is one single failure. And then there's no form of backup. There's nothing kept anywhere. You can't even monitor to know where is failing? I mean, Let, uh, promise, is... promise, promise, promise. <laughs> Let me tell you what just came to my mind as you were saying it. You yeah. are throwing a party and <laughs> and you invited guests, you invited your boss, you invited yeah. your besties and every and all of a sudden the light went. Nepa took light. What happens? It's <laughs> <laughs> not just the scenario like, you're describing. It, it's like total <laughs> darkness, like you know, there's no sight, no insight. In fact, there, there's going to be a lot of catastrophe, right? So I feel like this topic is, is a topic that gives, sheds light or that enables your resources in the cloud platform to, to have that light, right? To, mm -hmm. to function properly. And it helps you, it gives you insight into what is really, really happening at the back end. And, you know, mm -hmm. and of right. course, you can always monitor and see what is going on. So, I mean, this is a very, very, very important topic. I, I can't overemphasize this. Right, so let's right. proceed. Um, let's see what we have today to talk about, and then we proceed from there. So, yes, um, of course, we are going to be looking at the, the backup service that Azure has, and um, these are basically like the prerequisites can see. Oh, I haven't shared my screen, my bad. So let me please share my screen so no that problem at all. is able to follow through. Um, maybe, yeah, let me, let me share my screen so that. I promise, I just, I just want to remind our audience uh, that the only authentic material to use to prepare for AZ104 is ms lane okay yes so uh yes. what what promise is showing on the screen is what has been authorized by microsoft so every other thing is extra this is the most authentic yes yes thank you very much mvp rafael um please can you confirm you can see my screen yes bright and clear awesome awesome i feel like i'm actually seeing four screens with your glasses joining <laughs> awesome well all right all right i mean that that's lovely that's lovely to, to to see um okay so like i said we are going to be taking a look at um the monitor and the backup azure of azure resources and the very first thing we want to actually take a look here when looking at this topic is um azure definitely has a backup service Mm. Right, Azure definitely yes. has a backup service, and of course, there are various ways which you can benefit from this backup service. Either you're backing up from on-prem to Azure, 
or you are doing a backup of your Azure resources, any which way is fine. But definitely, Azure has got your back. Based exactly. On that, right? Mm. You also yes. have backing up of Azure VMs, or you have a, a system where you can back up your data in maybe a storage account or another storage account, you know, various forms of backup. And that's why it mentions about the things you need to know about Azure Backup. You can see here, offload of on-premise ba on backup, backup mm. of Azure IaaS VMs, get mm. unlimited data transfer, keep data secure, retention, that's retain short and long-term data. You know, these are like a lot of benefits already you're a mentioning. A lot of benefits that Azure provides for your backup environment. But I mean, let's see how to actually implement this setup. I know I have actually done something where I was backing up my virtual machine to Azure Key Vault, right? Mm. And also some data to Azure Key Vault. But let's see actually how do you implement your backup, right? from the backup center in Azure, right? So this is an amazing view, right? And for those of you who don't, who don't know, there is actually a backup center for Azure backup, right? Mm, and this is right. a center where most of the backup operations happen, right? You can see here, it says Azure backup provides a single unified management experience in Azure. So this is like one um, center where you get to do a lot of backup, you get to schedule your backup, do on-demand backup, you get to do a restore action and all of those things. All of those things happen in the Azure backup center. Now, mm. things to consider when using the backup center. And the very first thing it says is what? Consider range of capabilities. So MVP Rafael, what does it actually mean when it says consider range of capabilities? Can you well, give us on this? Yes, yes, thank you very much. It's telling you that, uh, well, whether you have a small environment, your environment is large, um, as your backup has been designed to make sure that you can still, yeah, backup. So uh, it, it, it spans across uh, whatever you're backing up in Azure, uh, Azure will be able to span backup across regions, across subscriptions, across. So yeah, Azure does a lot of things for you to so that you do not disappoint your team member, so that you do not go off offline uh, unnecessarily. Awesome. Another thing here it says is you need to consider the data source centric management and specifically. It made mention of a statement here. It says a resource owner or backup administrator can manage backup items across different vaults. So that's mm. to tell you that even when you have a single vault, that doesn't limit you on the kind of backup you can do. You can also back up your data, your you know, storage across various vaults. It could be secret, you know, anything across. Mm multiple vaults in multiple environments. Another thing he makes mention here is what? Connected experiences. Uh, and VP Rafael, can you shed more light on this? Connected experiences. Yes, uh, it's saying here that uh, it uses uh, your workbook of monitor, okay? It helps you to view uh, your, it, it helps you it, you can view details of your backup, okay? You, yeah. It's as well, it's not just going to do it uh, without keeping you in the picture, okay? Whatever is being backed off, you you can follow along. You can learn and see what is happening to your workload that has been backed up uh, in the, from the backup center. Yeah, that's what this is uh, just saying. Awesome. I think that, 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 that was a very nice one. And I think the last one here was just making mention of the supported scenarios, you know, when you are doing a virtual machine backup, including SQL and Sapana. Also, when you are doing a file, Azure Files backup or Azure Blob Storage backup, or lastly, your database, your backup for your Azure database for post, Postgres SQL server backup. So these are the various, various scenarios which you can make use of the backup center in Azure. 
Then the next thing he says is, is going on to talk about how do you configure your Azure Recovery Services Vault backup option. So what options do you have and how do you go about the configuration? Now you can see here, it says, things to know about the Recovery Services Vault, right? It says there are major things that you guys need to know when we are talking about the recovery services vault. And the very first thing it mentions here is that the recovery services vault can be used to back up Azure file shares or on-premises files and folders. I believe that is yeah, actually- the, the, guy, the guy is very, the guy is very, very active. He does both on-premise and in the cloud. <laughs> awesome. I mean, you know, when you have quite a number of servers, in your on-premises environment and you're looking at, hey, where do I move these files to or where do I move this data to? Of course, you can make use of the Azure Backup Center for all of this. And then it also says you can also do your recovery services vault store backup for your data. You can also do your recovery services vault support system center data protection manager, right? And then it gives a sample of how you can make this configuration. So you see here, you know, says, you know, you know, promise, promise. I want to say a little thing. You, you know what I like about the this whole thing is the yeah. fact that if if you remember very well, infrastructure as a service is giving you the user control. And I think that with this backup service that you have, Microsoft is not leaving you alone because you yeah. might make a mistake uh, because. It, infrastructure as a service is giving you the control you might you might make one or two mistakes that will put you into trouble but with these backup services you can get to recover from any issues that true. that that would cause true 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 you are very you are very right on that and of course i mean the whole essence of this this series uh, especially this session is to ensure that you know our audience don't get into trouble because they don't have a form of backup here or there or stuff like that so i think that is a major essence of this this particular uh, uh um session right so here it's um just a brief overview of what the user interface looks like when you try to make use of the recovery services vault and you can see here you can then decide to pick what you want to use um let me see let me say let me say something maybe i should actually show you what it actually looks like in the azure environment um let me do a quick um yes so as you can see here um yes let me go to the I mean, Peter, Rafael, can you see my screen? Is it audible? Yes, it is. All right. Azure Recovery Services Vault. Yeah, so you can see. So what he was actually trying to show us in the diagram was a way you can use to, you know, actually, you know, create a recovery services vault. So basically what you need to do is you need to fill in your resource group. Either you create a new one, right? or and then you fill in the instance details. The instance details are what is the name of the vault you probably want to use for the backup? What region do you want to have this vault? Is there some form of redundancy you want configured or do you want to have some encryption, right? Is it, do you want Microsoft to manage the, your encryption key for you or you want to manage the encryption key yourself? And then, you can get to state the vault properties. Um, enable immutability. This is a function to ensure that nobody is able to delete anything in your in your backup, right? right. Until the immutability is disabled, right? And then you can get to configure your networking if you want to be able to access your vault over the internet or you just want over, you just want to be able to access your um, your vault over a private endpoint. I think I think for best practice, I think for best practice, this should be uh, accessed over a private endpoint. Exactly, exactly. So there are various which ways which you can configure this, and of course, it's it's all up to 
how you would like the setup to be. But of course, like Henry B. Raphael says, it's, it's for best practice, it's advised to you know, make use of your private endpoint for, for assessing things like this. Right, another thing again also to consider is the tagging. It's very, very important that people actually tag their resources, very, very important. The reason is you, your tags on your resources, they go a long way. They help you to be able to identify resources both in your subscription. Um, also, you, you also, for instance, um, assuming the financial department is, 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 is making use of some form of costs, you want to be able to segment what resources are each department using and what is what are those resources costing? You know, I think that is that is an um, a very very important way to to dissociate or to um, uh, what's the word follow through with what each department in your organization is making use of. And then the next thing right. you do is just you review and create. So I mean, these are the basic things that one needs to consider when looking at configuring your recovery services vault. All right, um, we will proceed in again. Um, you can see here, it makes mention of the things to know about when configuring your recovery services vault. And the very first thing it mentions is you don't need to configure the storage replication type. MVP Rafael, I don't know if you can shed more light on this. Why don't I need to configure the storage application type? No, because because at each point in time, um, okay, let me give it in a very simple. At each point in time, it's taking a snapshot of of the whole thing, and yeah. um, in in this field that we are in, uh, is when you say snapshot, it's like it's capturing the entire data, the whole process that is going on. So you see that. It's it's doing it on its own, so you don't you don't need to configure storage. It's automatic. Everything is done automatically for you. Exactly. Awesome. Awesome. Then it also says something as you can configure replication for your recovery services vaults from the backup center dashboard under properties, right? So you can see here. This is just a the a, 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 a what's the word I would use a a pictorial diagram for the user interface on how and I like the fact that sorry sorry to cut you I like the yeah. fact that they said geo uh geo redundant meaning that it's taking the snapshot is storing everything in another region for you so mm -hmm. that uh, the region the primary region in case it's affected you can get the data from another region awesome awesome I think this these are some of the things that actually make the future very, very um, interesting and very, very um, important to make use of. Um, another set of things to also consider here is how do you use the Microsoft Azure it's four agents? How do you make use of the Microsoft Azure recovery services agent? Um, MVP Raphael. I don't know, at what point or, or the other, have you ever had to make use of this agent? Yeah, of course, You before you do any any backup, okay? okay what is an agent in the first place? Um, okay. Generally speaking, an agent is a small piece of software. It's a software, it's a helper software that helps you to do the dirty work. So whether you, whether you are doing migration or whether, most of the things in this field we are in, you actually need an agent. So for this particular, a uh, thing that we are discussing, the agent is called Microsoft Azure Recovery Services Agent. It's a small piece of software that helps with the replication. So you actually need to install it on the machine, on, uh, on the machine that you want to uh, work on. Like they say on the screen, uh, from your, uh, yeah, you either need to install it on your on your virtual machine or your on-premise uh, machine. It's an interesting piece of um, uh, uh, software that helps you do all the transfers. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, uh, let's see. Another, okay, in fact, you've given us quite an in, in interesting details about this agent, but I mean, once you intend, the idea is once you intend to make use of this backup, all you need to do is 
have this agent running on your machine. This agent is going to communicate with Azure, and then you should be able to carry out the various backups which you want to. Um, I mean, these are very, very awesome scenarios where you can make use of this agent, especially when you want to do an on-premises direct backup, right? Or you want to do a backup for specific files and folders in your local machine or in your on-premises machine, or you want to back up to your MABS or your system center DPM. And of course, you can configure your on-premises files and folder backup. That means that you can actually select just to back up the files and folders you need and not everything on the whole system. And right. as you can see on this diagram, this just gives us a pictorial insight on what it is like to actually just select the particular files and folders which you need. Um, MVP Raphael, taking a look at this diagram, can you give us some quick insight on as to how this works? No, let me tell you what this brings to my head. Okay, now I I got um I got involved with a project, a very massive government project, and they needed to back up uh their data to a, a secondary uh region because they were afraid that they did not have they do not have enough. Uh, that anything can happen to uh, their facility. So just like as you see on the screen, um, you need an Azure subscription, okay? Then we we have the uh, recovery services, but which promise showed you how to create. Then the the agent, as you can see, is still on that same. Um, yeah, the the agent is there. Then uh, then you see the transfer from the Windows uh, Windows workstation. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything is just going smoothly. Uh, you can see that this, the folders and file, yeah, everything is moving from on-premise to the cloud. It is awesome. it's actually an interesting concept. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Right, so you can see it's from the files and folders to the agent and then to your server. And then from there, you can then move them to the recovery services vault in Azure. So that is just amazing. And as you can see, three simple steps to make this configuration, create your recovery services vault, download the mass agent and credential files, and then install and register your mass agents. The last one is you configure your backup. So backups. you can see, this is really, really, really awesome. And with this in particular, your setup is good to, to go. go. All right. I mean, this has been really amazing, um, MVP Raphael. Don't you think so? Yes, yes. I, I like it because it's it, if you're preparing for AZ104, what we're actually doing is to tell you that it's not a big deal. Uh, you don't need to get you don't need to uh stress over it. These things are actually uh doable and they are easy. So we just like you know discussing in a chilled out way so that you can be chilled out. Am I right? Um, right? So, I mean, with this, at this point, we would love to say thank you for joining us today on this awesome series. And we hope to continue this series. So stay tuned, you know, keep following us. And of course, subscribe to our station so you can always get updated with these trainings. And before I go, let, let, let me give the opportunity to, to MVP Raphael to say one last word and then we go for the day. Okay, guys, um, uh, my name is Raphael Gabomo. I'm a Microsoft MVP and we belong to Azure Nigeria community. So if you want to see us, uh, you need to join our community. So uh, Promise here is my partner in crime. We're going to be bringing you a lot of exciting Azure news. It might not be, it might not be uh, AZ104. It might be something else. So stay tuned as we're going to be coming back to you again very soon. Bye-bye for now. Awesome. Thank you all. Bye-bye all.